morning, everybody. Thank you for still being here. My name is Stefan Gustafsson. Today, I would like to call myself Democracy Officer because we are on a mission to democratize space. What does that mean? We would like that the benefits and opportunities of space become available to everybody. So what does it mean? In practice, then, well, let's start with space-based services, satellite communication. I would like to make a short poll here. Who of you is born later than 1985? Yeah, so quite a few of you missed the start of Europe's first private satellite communication company, SES Astra, based in Luxembourg. Today, satellite communication is everywhere. There are even networks being built specifically for machine-to-machine -machine communication. There are industri industry sectors which are completely dependent on satellite communication. Think maritime. Or applications. Think if you are crossing the Atlantic in an aircraft, I would like to access internet. Access to internet, by the way, is still part, something that the part of the world's population doesn't have. But with satellite, we can deliver it for a reasonable price. And with internet access follows uh, education, which is also part, a fundament uh, of democracy. Ten years later, 1995, GPS became operational. Second, Paul, who of you have a GPS receiver with you today? I expect to see everybody with their hands up, because it's very likely to be integrated in your smartphone. It's just we do not think about it. That's Satellite navigation or locationing is so well integrated into our lives, and it's thanks to the miniaturization of technology um, and the ability uh, of your smartphone to run all those apps that it has led to such a big success. But it's fully democratic. It hasn't become until about half a year ago when Galileo became operational. Uh, we still don't have all satellites in orbit, but you can make use of it. What's so important then about Galileo? It's European? No, it's not controlled by the military, as all other systems are. Let's move on to Earth observation, something that in the past has been reserved to few and privileged, but now is again available for everybody to use. As an example, the uh, European Commission program Copernicus uh, offers loads of data, high quality, validated, free to use, and you can even build your business around it. Uh, I expect that a lot of innovation will take place in this area in the next few years, just as we have seen in the area of satellite navigation in the past decade or so. So if you are an investor here today and uh, look for opportunities, why not check all those startups in the area of Earth observation? Um, looking at this image, what could that be? It looks like a whiskey barrel with the solar panels. Um, it's our Sentinel 5P satellite. It was launched quite recently. It has a sensor that could measure that measures air pollution and it can produce images just like this one. And here you can see, for example, that if you are going to on vacation and want to breathe uh, fresh air, the Swiss Alps would be better than the Italian Po Valley in this respect. You know that, of course, already. You also see that over France, we must have had quite a strong southerly wind because the air pollution from Paris is smeared out all the way across to the Belgian border. And where I live on the Dutch space coast, there isn't so good as I hoped it would be. And you might wonder, Ireland then, don't we have any air pollution there? Well, the image doesn't reveal that because you need a clear sky for this sensor to work. So the island was covered by a cloud this day. Um, but what about this image then? Beautiful green island. Well, working at ESA, one of the big advantages is all beautiful images in our archives. So I couldn't resist including this one. And I hope you agree with me. It's the number one image of this conference. It has nothing to do with air. Uh, Pollution, however, it was taken by a satellite for vegetation mapping, and this satellite doesn't even have a sensor registering the green color. Blue, red, infrared, near infrared, but not green. So green has been added later, but I think still it's a very beautiful picture of a beautiful island. Democratizing space is not only about 
providing services, data to everybody, it's also providing access to space. This is Open Cosmos. Our, um, yes, I'm pointing there because I've seen them. It's that screen, you see them on this screen. <laughs> Uh, that's a startup from our ESA Business Incubation Center in Havel, um, started a few years ago, and within two years, they have launched their own satellite. So this is possible also for you. Um, in the past, it was something only the larger space companies could do, and there are a bunch of, of these smaller companies who have some as business model to design a satellite, having it launched, and maybe even operating it for you. I mentioned this example, Open Cosmos, because it belongs to our ESA Business Center community. Across Europe, as shown on this map, the bright blue dots, we have business incubation centers at roughly 40 locations. And our Irish partners are here today. They give a, a workshop after this session, so if you're interested in their offerings, just go there, and uh, maybe you also would like to partner up with them. Also very good. So how are these startups doing? Yes, I think quite well. We have helped so far more than 600 companies to start. Last year, the top 10 investments in these were 150 million euros. And to put that into a perspective, 150, that's about eight times the Irish investment in ESA space program done in last years. In the UK, economy, the investments in space companies, our startups in UK took, received about one-fifth of the total investments in space companies. So they, they're able to catch quite a big share of investments in space. The number one was this German company, Lilium, securing funding of 19 million euros last year. Uh, that's much, much more than what we from ESA has invested in the Business Incubation Center program and all the startups since the beginning 15 years ago. So we see a very good return on our investment. The return, however, does not go back to ESA. It goes back to the economy of our member states. That's how it should be. What are the blue dots here? That's our, our technology brokers. At ESA, we have realized technology developed for space can also be very useful in other contexts. As an example, the Copernicus program generates 14 terabytes of fresh data every day. We have the solutions to take that data down, to process it, to store it, to analyze it, to make it available. Uh, so if you are in the business of big data, well, maybe space has something to offer for you. I could go on with examples, but instead I would like to trigger your imagination a bit this is the Mars rover, ExoMars <coughs> rover. It should land on Mars in, I think, three years. Think about it when it's there. How should we control it? Round trip delays are far too long for us to be able to remote control it. Uh, we don't have proper maps of Mars, although I've understood some are in the making, but for sure there is no satellite navigation system there. Worst of all, if it gets stuck or something breaks down, how should we help this rover? It is completely on its own, and it has to find the way almost on its own. So it must be highly autonomous. This is also why the space industry is looking for solutions somewhere else which can be used in space. Uh, one example is artificial intelligence, which we are investigating right now. I'm not sure about if that will use artificial intelligence, but it's just to mention it. Have you, have you heard about Pepe Colombo? Anybody? No, you will later this year when it's launched on this seven-year trip to Mercury, the planet closest to the sun. If you are looking for a long vacation, you can join. But mind the high radiation levels and also the heat on a planet so close to the sun. Still, that might be nothing if you compare it with the solar orbiter. What this spacecraft has to endure going closer to the sun than what we have ever been before. Now, trying to put bits and pieces together, if we have an autonomous rover, ability to withstand heat and radiation, maybe we have just what we need to clean up after a nuclear disaster. I agree that would only be a niche market, and hopefully we would never ever need such a thing, right? But I'm not the one who should come up with the great ideas. That's why, that's why I'm here. You have to do it. 
Um, so I hope I have illustrated a little bit what space really is about. Uh, of course, it's about services, but it's also about opportunities to use data, to use technologies, to use networks, um, or just as an investment area to find those kind of opportunities. So the next time you think space, do not only think astronauts going to the space stations, doing research, or spacecraft sent to planets far away. The next time you think space, think business. Okay, thank you very much.